All right, so I tried to get back into historical romances. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and after today's video, I thought that I would talk about the few historical romances that I have read so far in January. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Lisa. I like to read a lot of historical romances, but I feel like in the year 2022, I kind of let historical romances kind of fall by the wayside. I just never really read as many as I did in 2021, but here I am trying to make a comeback and trying to read more historical romances, especially since I own so many on my shelves that I have yet to read. So for this week, I decided to pick up around five historical romances. I have another one here that is on my shelf, but I can't locate. So the first book that I want to talk about is this one called A Wicked Game by Kate Bateman. And essentially, if you guys don't know, Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings and I host a historical romance book club and we meet once a month to discuss historical romances. And our January group pick was this from Kate, from Kate Bateman. And I've read Kate Bateman before. Kate Bateman is a solid historical romance author you are bound to have a story that you're going to thoroughly enjoy with really great writing with really good setting and it usually has action and mystery and a nice decent plot so with Kate Bateman and I sometimes I find that her stories move a little bit too slow or it focuses a lot on the action and mystery and it takes away from the romance so sometimes I give her books like a three out of five stars and this one was kind of very similar to all the other romances that I read from her I gave it a three out of five stars because I felt like it did focus a lot on other things. It just felt weird a lot of the times with the pacing. So essentially this follows our heroine who has a very unconventional job. She actually makes a lot of maps and our hero is in love with her basically from the very start and kind of follows her around like a lost puppy and she is trying to kind of fend him off because she wants to focus on her career and also because she thinks that he's a womanizer. But of course they have this very strong mutual attraction together. There's uh, like a action plot villain se sequence that also takes place towards the end as well but sometimes I just felt like that the story moved a little too slow and it was just a little bit boring for me but nonetheless I really like the cover of this book but I heard really great things about the second book in this trilogy called A Daring Pursuit so I'm excited to read that one once I get the hold of it at the library. So the next book I want to talk about is this one that is from a lesser known historical romance author that I picked up randomly on thrift books because I found the cover and I thought it was gorgeous. This one's called How to Seduce a Scoundrel by Vicky Drilling and it's published a long time ago. By a long time ago I mean like mid 2000s from Forever Romance. I just liked Forever Romance's historical romance covers way back then. I feel like the artistry was a lot better and the photography was a lot better, but this one follows one of my favorite tropes. It involves our heroine who is in love with her older brother's best friend. And it's so cute because she's always had feelings for him, but he never reciprocated those feelings. And then he is told by the brother to kind of like escort her into the season and introduce her to everybody that is available to be her husband and obviously he has feelings and attraction for her because she has grown up to be this really wonderful woman that he really enjoys having conversations with and she is heartbroken because she really wants him to like her but it doesn't seem like it's going to work out, especially when she has a lot of like matches kind of lined up for her. So overall, the story was solid, like the plot was good, and it was exactly what I like in uh, historical romances. It followed all the tropes that I like, but the problem was is that I felt that the characters were really focused on other things other than the romance. I felt like that these characters were talking a lot to side characters. There was lots of scenes where the characters weren't even together in the same scene. So it just really was fun but it was also very slow at times because I read historical romances for the interaction between the hero and heroine not necessarily for the heroine and the friends or heroine and the sister or heroine with like you know like just random side characters like it just took away from the enjoyment of the story it moved a little too slow for my liking and it definitely made me feel like maybe I should pause historical romances for a while if I keep picking up duds like this. So it was a little disappointing but still overall really liked the dynamic 
dynamic and really like the trope in this book. So the next book that I picked up is this one from Megan Frampton. This is book number one in the Hazards of Duke series and it's called Never Kiss a Duke and this one is kind of like a book that a lot of my friends have given it three out of five stars. It started off really strong and it was entertaining in the beginning but then once again it kind of moved into a slower territory where our characters were just kind of like figuring themselves out and nothing was just really happening between them. Like the chemistry was still there but there was just no action involved between the characters so it just didn't feel like the romance was present most of the times but essentially this one follows a plot line that I really enjoyed and I thought was really fun so our hero is not the rightful duke and it's exposed when his parents died and then people were like okay but you're not the actual duke because you're a bastard and then he lost all his life things he lost his possessions he lost the people that he taken care of he lost his wealth he lost everything and he essentially is too ashamed of himself because he was once this really great man but then now he has nothing and in his name and so he kind of runs off into this gambling den and our heroine actually opened that gambling den and she's a very successful businesswoman who makes a lot of money off people gambling and so she hires him because she knows that he needs like a job because he's just been kind of like hanging around and not really doing much anymore and that's where they connect and that's where they have time to spend more time with each other and it was entertaining at first I really like their mute cute I really like the dynamic between these two characters I just wish there was just more of them like acting on it like I felt like there wasn't enough so I gave it three out of five stars I still enjoyed it and Megan Frampton is still going to be kind of like an author that I'll continue to read even though most of the time I always give her books a three out of five star rating and I only want to pick up more of her books mostly because I feel like her characters and the predicaments that they're in are really interesting a lot of the times and then I also like how she writes like the chemistry and like the steamy scenes that we get to see. So the next book that I did read is this one called The Duke I Once Knew by Olivia Drake. Now I think I never read an Olivia Drake novel before so I was kind of excited to kind of walk into this one because it did follow a trope that I really liked. It followed the trope of unrequited love. So our heroine was always in love with our hero but then it just didn't work out when they were young and then soon they kind of grew apart and they grew older and then and our hero ended up having children that he needed to take care of but I think it's if I remember correctly it's not his children it's his nephews and his uh, niece so then afterwards he needs someone like a governess to kind of take care of these children because he has no idea what to do with these like young ones meanwhile our heroine is treated like a maid in her family like everybody just kind of uses and abuses her and have her do all like the chores have her take care of the children even though they're from like a good Good family with good financial status they just think that she's okay with doing all these extra things for the family when in reality she has had it up to here with all of it and she doesn't want to do it anymore and she wants more respect so in the beginning of the book she actually has like not like a mental breakdown but she actually loses it and she finally loses her temper and she tells everybody off and she tells everybody like everything she always wanted to say and she gets everything off her chest which was amazing to read it was definitely very gripping from the very start and she says like you know what freak this I don't need this anymore I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go find a job and she tries to go for this governess position that our hero has said out for and it's there where they kind of reconnect and they reunite like you know everything that has happened and so it was like entertaining at first but then once again it kind of like slowed down a bit when they finally started working together so it just was a solid start but then I lost interest and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars it was still entertaining and I have still a couple of Olivia's books on my shelf so I should be reading them very soon but just like not right now. All right, so I know I talked a lot about books that gave me, you know, a three out of five stars. It's like good, but it's not like the best. It's not something that I'm gonna write home about or it's not something that I will die on a hill to defend. But I ended up reading a five out of five star romance this week and it's called A Kiss to Remember from Teresa Medeiros. And this is five out of five, new book boyfriend, new book that I will continue thinking about throughout this whole entire year. It was just 
so good so entertaining this one was hilarious like i was reading this book while drinking tea and i spat out my tea across like the pages of the book as well as on my bed because it was just so funny and i was just snorting from like the clever witty lines that teresa incorporated in this book i felt like the characters were all funny i felt like the situations that they were put in were hilarious and if that's not enough to sell you to read this book then this book is essentially about our hero who is very cold he is very callous he is raised in an environment where he really doesn't have love anymore and it's because when he was young he was betrayed by his mother and his father because they sold him off to their uncle and so that he can be like the heir of like the dukedom and he never wanted to live like this duke life he just wanted to be staying at home in a quaint house with his mom and his dad who loved him and with his fat cat and then that was it but since he was betrayed he kind of grew up in a house where he just never felt like he was loved or appreciated so he grew up to be a man who doesn't care about other people's feelings and then he wants to take back the old home that his mom and his dad used to live in and his, his childhood home so he doesn't care about it and one day he travels in the forest to go to that small house only to have an accident fall off his horse and then hit his head on like a tree trunk or something and he absolutely just like loses all his memories our heroine who desperately needs a husband because in order for her to inherit the house that she's living in she needs a husband she finds this man laying on the forest floor and she's intrigued so she decides to just kind of take him and take him back to the house that she lives in with her two rambunctious siblings and this crazy cook and also like the like the helper or like the person who takes care of like the house and the farm and it's only until he wakes up do they realize that he does not know his identity at all and so she comes up with this great scheme of trying to convince him that they are courting each other and that they're set to marry each other like very soon and so he is just kind of like fumbling about not really sure what's happening he's very concerned with himself because he doesn't remember a lot of these things that she's telling him because they're just all lies and he just doesn't feel right at all but he kind of goes with it because what other choice can he make and it's just so entertaining it's so funny and it's obviously so romantic like the ending was just so good and our hero was a perfect book boyfriend and i just loved him loved him loved him so much loved him and i think i cried a bit too as well that's how much i like this book but this one also sent me into a spiral and i really wanted to read more books from teresa the only problem is is that teresa has very little audiobooks so whatever reading i have to do with her backlist copies is through physical reading and it's not like i have the most time to sit down and read a physical book but i'm slowly but surely making my way and putting in effort to read the physical books so i am going to be posting a reading vlog hopefully i'm not sure i'm in the middle of filming it but in the reading vlog i do talk about another teresa Maduro's book that i read called charming the prince so i'll pay attention to new uploads coming your way in the next couple of days or weeks so that you can hear my response and my review towards that book and then i'm also currently reading another teresa Maduro's book called the bride and the beast and it's part of the same series as a kiss to remember so a kiss to remember is actually a fairy tale retelling i feel like it has elements of snow white slash sleeping beauty but i think it's more sleeping beauty and then this is like book number two which is obviously a retelling of beauty and the beast and then the first book that i read called charming the prince was a retelling of cinderella so i'm really excited to continue this series it's a quartet so after i finish this one i'm gonna read the last one which i don't know the title of and i don't know the retelling of but anyways that is it for all the historical romances that i read recently hopefully you guys added some books to your tbr hopefully you guys do read more Teresa Medeiros because I really like her story and I'm really excited to bring more historical romance content soon in the future on my channel. I feel like historical romance content is what a lot of people have subscribed to my channel for and I have been doing very little of mostly because I am a mood reader and I haven't read many historical romances recently so forgive me for that. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye!